and um, we'll start with the the Clean Up Marinwood group. I don't know what order you want to go in. I think you're all together. So if uh, the first person who wants to come up will announce yourself and then let me know which order you want to go in. That would be much appreciated. Hi, I'm Stephen Nessel, and good to see everybody again. Um, and uh, so uh, things seem to be going in the right direction, anyhow, at Marinwood Plaza uh, or Prosperity Cleaners. Um, but we still have incomplete data, uh, residual ca uh, contamination on the site, and soil vapor extraction testing is needed. Um, so this is uh, going to be very quick. We have a lot of, we basically have a toxic soup um, on the eastern hot spot. That's S MW5. Uh, it needs to be treated. It needs to be excavated. Whatever you're going to do, please, uh, this is what's feeding all of our problems here. Uh, the soil vapor, uh, which we're most concerned with because uh, there is an adjacent uh, residential uh, 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 condo complex um, with it's basically uh, endangered. Um, here is a uh, picture of the site again, and it shows you the sites of the soil vapor uh, wells. Um, and if you note, uh, we're going to be talking about SVM 7, SVM 8, and SVM 3. So uh, SVM the soil vapor is, decline is, is very, very gradual or even static. We did a, uh, you know, rough, uh, uh, you know, rate, looked at the, the rate of decline, and uh, uh, it will not achieve residential standards until 2035, and that's completely unacceptable. The good news is you're real close to commercial, and... Uh, so if the developer is paying attention, or a potential developer is paying attention, there's an opportunity coming up very quickly on this site. Um, but the, uh, the, two one, the two that I mentioned before, SVM 7 and SVM 8, are just 40 feet away from Casa Marinwood, and they're well above residential limits until at least 2024. And we think this is totally, totally unacceptable. So what we're requesting is further evacuation and treatment of the eastern hot spot, uh, a feasibility study for active soil vapor extraction to remove the toxic contaminants next to the residents, and then uh, an immediate implementation, impl implementation of soil va vapor extraction until safe levels are achieved for residential standards on the site. So um, pretty simple request. Uh, we just want you to uh, continue and, and uh, please pay attention because uh, it's our health and safety and our children that will suffer the consequences of toxic contamination and that is totally, totally unacceptable. You'll continue to see us, by the way, uh, until this problem is cleared up. So um, we know it's not going away. We're going to be watching the data. Every, every time we come here, we learn a little bit new, more stuff about the science. And um, anyhow, please pay attention. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I think this is Bill McNicholas. Correct. Good morning. Board members, executive officer, staff. Bill McNicholas with the member of the cleanup Marinwood Plaza now oversight committee. I don't have my partner with me today after 17 years as a service dog. He finally passed away a couple of months ago, but I do have a new one who's in training right now. Uh, totally support Steve and what he said because we worked together on the package and I worked with uh, Supervisor Conley on it. I did deliver a letter from one of the concerned citizens 
Uh, <clears throat> Would you like this record, uh, this letter to be put in the record? It's from Mr. Justin Baugh. Yes, I would. All right, we will do that. Uh, one thing I still see is that uh, the non-removal of the building, which was directed in uh, April 24, uh, was it 2014 order, was never done because of various things. I won't go into details, which I'm sure you're aware. We probably would have eliminated SVM 9, which is the source of the uh, soil vapor gas that we're experiencing. It's right next to the excavation. And because they didn't remove the building, they couldn't go bigger. And the other thing is the eastern hotspot, just to augment what Steve said, is seven times the drinking water level and is still supplying the plume, which is still not defined as was required under that order, uh, out on St. Vincent's and on uh, Silvera Ranch. And they're working on that, and I know Mr. Trotter is going to be following me to speak on that episode. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, this is uh, Mr. Trotter. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Silvera family, um, and we, you know, we share some of the same concerns with the neighborhood group, in particular in two respects. One is with respect to the eastern hotspot. Um, as Mr. McNicholas said, it is still getting data that's seven times the safe drinking water limit. And we're not concerned about soil vapor there in that location, but in fact the groundwater moves in the other direction easterly underneath Highway 101 and then it comes onto the Silvera property and eventually has also migrated onto the St. Vincent's property, which is further to the north and east. Um, and the Basically, that, that still contaminated groundwater plume is, is continuing to move. There's been no action taken by Geologica to actually stop that movement from taking place. Um, and I've asked uh, staff to give you that graphic, which was pre prepared by our consultant. And I just wanted to point out a couple things about that. Um, as you can see, there are a bunch of blue and green lines across the five um, uh, part per billion contour lines. The green is what Geologica had been proposing as part of its wrap. The blue is what our consultant is suggesting needs to be done. And, and in particular, those treatment lines need to be lengthened so they get out as close to the five uh, part per billion PCE line as is realistically possible. And it also shows west of Highway 101 an additional treatment line to prevent this stuff from ever getting onto the Silvera property and the St. Vincent's property in the first place. Uh, so far, the staff have not made those directions to uh, Geologica to actually do a more aggressive uh, remediation to meet the 10-year cleanup goal, which staff has, in fact, put on Geologica and Marinwood Plaza. But if you're not going to treat all the way out to the five uh, part per billion contour line, the safe drinking water contour line, you're just not going to get there in a timely way. So we would ask you to provide appropriate direction to staff to make sure that they put in place mechanisms that will actually achieve these goals. The other aspect of this is the characterization delineation of the plume. And I think it's fair to say that in the heart of this plume, which is inferred from the data which has been collected by Geologic on behalf of Marinwood Plaza, that delineation is pretty good. But as you go further to the southeast, you see the plume crosses Miller Creek and, and is on uh, the south side of Miller Creek on, on my client's ranch property. Um, and there, it's been basically almost two years since they've done any grab sampling out there. There is a, there is a um, MW12, a monitoring well that's inside the plume delineation. But two years have gone by and this stuff is in the groundwater and it's continuing to move. And if we're going to actually do a remediation, and, and just to give you some perspective here, um, their obligation is to come back and provide a report on April 23rd to staff as to what they're proposing to do. If you're going to actually you know, take care of this, we would like to have better delineation of that plume to the southeast, because two years have gone by and we don't know what's happened underground. It's time for some more sampling out at that far southeast end. 
I want to thank you very much for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have them. Yes, sir. I, I do have a question. I, I remember this pretty well, and I remember the Silvera well that had uh, uh, high levels, and, and uh, one of the uh, responses was to require um, alternative water sources. So, so exactly where is that well in relationship to M? W12. I just want to be, the, I know we the, can't talk about it, but I want to make sure that I understand the facts. Sure. Um, the wells are, are, are substantially to the west of that. Um, and uh, Are they on the south, south they side are, the of Miller Creek? Both, the wells are both on the south side of Miller Creek, um, and one of them is fairly close to the creek. The other one is further to the south. Okay. Um, the one that's close to the creek has been getting treated at the wellhead to, to screen for PCEs. Um, and the data that they've gotten from grab samples there, it has shown up, PCEs have shown up there in trace amounts. It may be that in that particular location, Miller Creek is acting to prevent the MCEs from, you know, actually passing through. But, it, but in fact, as you go further east, in fact, it's, those PCEs are down in the historical, you know, reach of Miller Creek in geologic time, and it's now going underneath Miller Creek and coming out the other side. So is that, is that helpful? Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I have just one question. So um, the injection borings line, um, you, you, you noted on your diagram as being proposed. Are any of them implemented at this point? At this, at this point, they are in, the, in, in a pilot test study phase. They have done some pilot test work, and uh, we've seen some of those results. And they asked for additional time to do some additional testing, and, and that was granted by staff. Their initial report, I think, was supposedly initially due early in January. They came in and requested basically another three months, and the, the staff granted that request. Actually, Silvera did not oppose that. We wanted to see more data ourselves. Uh, but no, they haven't done any active remediation along the whole length of the plume to actually solve this problem. The, they're actually only doing pilot work in one location that's sort of in the heart of the plume uh, uh, on, I think, help me out here, staff. MW10, I don't know. MW10. I don't know if you can actually read that. Yeah, it's right yeah, here. I see it, yeah. But it's on the red. But it's a... It is a relatively short reach. It does not reach all the way. It doesn't go all the way across the plume from north to south. And, and what's the, and the pilot study is to, to do what? To demonstrate the efficacy or lack of efficacy of the, of the approach? Yeah, they, they've done injections there. Ralph, come up to the microphone. Are you done? I, I'll answer questions if you okay. can't. All right. Well, I, I think Ralph <laughs> can. <so. laughs> hey, Ralph Lambert, uh, staff. Here. Uh, so the pilot test, they did injections over approximately 84-foot length of the plume, and they have, uh, I don't know, six or so wells around that that they're monitoring. So <clears throat> uh, they're monitoring the, uh, the effectiveness of that. So we're seeing biodegradation showing up, the uh, substantially the Total concentrations, when you add up PCE and its breakdown products, is not declining a whole lot yet. You know, the PCE is going down maybe, but DCIS is going up. They want to see, you know, the, all the concentrations go down, obviously. So, so we're seeing biodegradation, but uh, they're sampling actually this week out there. So, uh, Wait, was this, I don't really remember pilot study being part of the original plan, and I do remember asking whether this was a well-understood, well-established approach, and the answer was, oh yeah, no, this is a... It, know, it's a well-established approach. Now, the key is, you know, does it work here, and how fast does it work? Um, it, it, it works in many places. Sometimes it doesn't get very fast, or they want it, you know, you want to make sure it's going to take it all the way. And what's the plan if it doesn't? And when do we decide that? Uh, that should come out in the report next month okay. on the 23rd, the, uh, you know, whatever proposals or uh, modifications to the plan. Okay. 
Uh, this is Stephen Hill. Let me just add on there to, to what Ralph was saying. Uh, the pilot test will also help to with the final design of, of where the transects should go. So they may need to be enlarged. Or they may, you know, the, the configurations will probably change based on the pilot test results. Uh, and at the time, uh, w both we and the, the discharger and the offsite residents felt uh, way back a year or so ago that it was worth spending a bit of time on the pilot study so that what went into the ground actually works. And but and that's a fair comment. Our, our main concern is that, that their original plan did not extend these treatment lines long enough. No. If you're going to go out there and invest the resources, you ought to go all the way to the five part per billion contour line so you can get to safe drinking water levels sooner rather than later. And when, when you're going back and re-examining whether the lines are in the right place, will you also be looking at the data that's come in on the soil vapor wells that the folks that spoke from Marin would uh, raised a minute ago? Uh, I think that's apples and oranges. The soil gas is an issue on site. Understood. Uh, groundwater, uh, not soil gas, is the issue off site. Apples and oranges only, though, to the extent that the eastern hotspot that was referred to, I guess the allegation is that that was a, a continuing source of the contamination that's going downstream. So I guess the question is will you be looking at that to see whether? there's something to that or whether we're satisfied that the excavation that was previously done has removed the hotspot. Well, well, we should, we, we have a network of uh, both soil gas wells and groundwater wells, so we should be starting to see some declines in groundwater between the source site and this far off site location uh, to demonstrate the effectiveness of the big cleanup that was done on site. All right, just a procedural note here. Um, as you all know, hmm. because this item was not on the agenda and all parties have not had a chance to be here, um, it is appropriate, and if I'm saying this wrong, um, our attorney will correct me. <laughs> it's a, a, okay to ask clarifying questions, but we don't want to get in an extended discussion. Um, let's have clarification of that first. Sure, and so, so the there is no agenda item, so you are welcome to ask questions. Um, and then actually directing staff is where that would get uncomfortable without more people in the room presenting both sides. Very good. So I think we have a couple of more questions, but I do want also to ask, I have two more cards, and uh, from one from Bob Simon and one from Vicki Daner. Is that... Are, are you on the same issue? No. Okay, so we will finish this one up and then we'll, we'll ask you to come up. So we have a couple more questions. I have, I have and, just and the, I'm sorry. And then I was going to let Mr. Hill have a chance to add any clarifying comments that he wanted to. I have a really simple clarifying question. <laughs> the date on the graphic that you just handed out to us is September 2016. That's correct. I just want to make sure that's correct. That's right, okay. and that was a, that was a markup on the proposal that Geologica put forward. Okay. This was our exhibit, not Geologica's exhibit. It was take, it was adapted from the Geologica. But this has been an ongoing discussion. This has been in discussion since 2016 and to the present day. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have uh, a couple of questions. One is, uh, did we uh, the existing proposed lines? We, I remember we talked about this, but I can't remember if we identified these lines or Geological came and identified, like, proposed them, and then your proposed change, is it because of the width of the plume that you think they need to go longer? That's our position, and those lines, those green lines were part of the Geologica presentation that I believe was part of their post-wrap submissions to the Water Board staff. We're, well, we're following this very closely for obvious reasons. It affects <laughs> my course. client's land, I, their, their drinking water supplies, et cetera. Which is great. Um, so, uh, and then I actually been, uh, uh, I, I can't recall your name, I apologize. Steve was presenting. Um, I was looking at those graphs. There is some declining trends in these um, um, toxins. Is it because of the um, are they doing any remediation right now, or is it basically just because the process has stopped or the hotspot has been 
move that's happening. I'm trying to understand if the decline is natural or is it because they're doing something? Uh, we, we think that it's primarily due to the large soil excavation they did under the building a okay. year or so ago. Um, there would be a natural decline anyway, uh, but it wouldn't have been nearly as significant if they hadn't removed the source. Um, so that they've removed some seriously impacted soil underneath and, and therefore the soil gas uh, mm. cloud, if you will, that's around the facility is starting to decline. Yeah, I remember that presentation they, they had, they gave the size of the excavation and what was going on. So, um, and then I'm assuming if they do remediation that the slope of decline will increase. Right? You, mean, you mean if they do further remediation? Right. If it's done well, yes. Okay, and that's the idea. So, and just make one point. You only have three data points on there, so, you know, Please come up and use the microphone. I have to come to the microphone. If, if oh, okay. that's so we can record this for sure. the uh, for the record. Thank you. Sure. Uh, all that and, data. And again, is this is uh, Mr. Nestle. Yes. Uh, Stephen Nessel, again. Um, this is uh, just uh, from the Geologica's latest uh, report, and uh, so all the charts you see are, are Geologica's. Um, I just want to point out that there's only three data points on um, the uh, SVM 8 and SVM 7, so, you know, with natural variations, it's really not a highly confident uh, you know, trend line, so thanks. Thank you. All right, Mr. Hill, did you want to uh, add any clarifying remarks? Thank you. Yes, very, very shortly, because you're right, this isn't a hearing on the matter. Uh, we learned of, of the concerns uh, earlier this week, so we, we haven't spent a lot of time. Um, we're, we're reacting to them at the moment. Um, the site is under a cleanup order. The dischargers are complying with the order. They've done the the big soil cleanup on site that I just mentioned, and they're in the process of planning a, a significant off site groundwater cleanup with this pilot test. So we're, we're generally pleased with the direction. Um, in terms of the, the comments about uh, on site soil gas, um, there may need to be more cleanup done if this site is redeveloped for a residential use. Uh, at the moment, it's zoned, res it's zoned commercial, and that's, you know what the cleanup is intended to do, we would revise the, the order to require cleanup to residential if that happens. Uh, in terms of cell gas near the residences, um, there was a series uh, of samples closer to the residences that found non-detect concentrations of these contaminants. So, so the, the data closest to the homes suggest there is, there is no vapor intrusion happening. Uh, there may be a need to uh, go back and confirm that. Uh, uh, Mr. Nessel is correct that the, the concentrations of cell gas at the, the regularly monitored points are still somewhat high. They're declining, but they're still somewhat high. Um, and we'll, we'll evaluate that, and if, if that's necessary, we will require that additional, those additional monitoring points. Um, and I think that's about it. All right. I... Um at a minimum, I think we should follow this up with a report in the executive officer's uh, summary. And I'm going to suggest, I think, in May, because by then we will have the April 23rd Right. As, report as you heard, there's a report due April 23rd. Uh, whether we can, the report may come in, whether we're able to report on what the contents say in time to get that into our May report, we'll look. If we're not able to do May, we'll do June. That sounds good. Uh, so that will be plan A. If the board members wish to have a full-blown agenda item on this in the near future, please convey that offline to um, Mr. Wolf, the executive officer, and we'll act accordingly. Thank you very much. I'd suggest on that last point, let's make the uh, report through the executive officer's report, and then based on that, 
we'll see if there's any questions or concerns you have at the board that we should dig into deeper and report back to you either in, in open session or in further I, executive officer I'm report. sure the board members will let you know if they agree with that or not. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just want to ask one thing, Bruce. I think that sounds great. I would just ask that. Um, I think this has been going on for quite a while, and it would be helpful to have the chronology of the whole thing so that for me as a fairly new board member, I can understand the whole path. Thanks. We can spell that out. Yeah. Yeah. And just before the citizens leave, we appreciate your continuing Absolutely. concerns and the sophistication of your presentations. It's helpful. 